Yo, what's going on guys? Today's video is going to be a recap and my thoughts on the 6th anniversary live stream. Now, if you like this type of video, like it. If you want to subscribe, subscribe. I will be covering a lot of the stuff going on in Grand Blue with the anniversary in terms of weapons, upgrades, updates, and new things in, so and new content so if you like if you like that type of stuff you might want to subscribe anyways this new path of content um i did a lot of things here a lot of it's coming out later down the year um some of it's in april and may depending on the on the release schedule now with the newer stuff uh mainly the new battle system battle system 2 i want to get that out the way now because it's in its own little section here I will be linking this Reddit post in the description down below, along with Grand Blue EN's translations, because some of it is here, while well, not everything is here. But I want to give a shout out to Copper Leon for these translations too. So, pretty big here. Um, now we're gonna scroll down here. As you can see, the Battle System Two info is a little bit scrolled up here, opposed to the new info, which is down here. So at the very beginning, let's start with the Grand Blue. Battle System 2 guard system. I don't know if that's the terminology that is used by the community or it's the official name, the guard system, but we'll be calling it the guard system for now. If you use guard, you take reduced damage. Now, I don't know how massive this reduced damage can be. It could be anywhere from half the damage, 75. You can take no damage. Um, but upon using guard, however, you cannot use attack or skills you see here in the picture down below this is what the guard system looks like right here you see that you can toggle it on your characters so grand here has it toggled on so you can see the guard icon right there see that they have it toggled off so you don't see any guard icon on him and lancelot here has it toggled on and it's on for him same thing with neo having it toggled off you may also see that there's a little bar right here in the corner that is the chain burst gauge. Now, depending on how many times you chain burst in a fight, you will get the gauge increased. I believe it goes up 10% per Ogi. And upon doing a full chain afterward, or chain burst, I believe, I don't know if it has to be a full chain. I think it has to be a chain burst. You will get a additional effect based on your element. Now, the element for example, if your win would give defense up apparently, or I think it's defense up and a heal. So uh, depending on the element, you do get additional effects, which is pretty cool. I don't know how practical it is though, because as I mentioned, if it goes up 10% per Ogi, that means you would need to do 10 Ogis and the content. Generally, not much content in the game can survive 10 Ogis. So I don't know how practical that is, but, um, this is only really coming out to newer content. It will eventually come out to the older content in the game, but right now it's only really being released for newer content. So maybe the new content will have a ton of health or a ton of defense so that they don't get exploded instantly. But I don't know we, if this is still brand new, but I, I do hope that they do keep in mind that stuff dies rather fast in Grand Blue. We hit kind of hard. So hopefully they have either a ton of defense to make so that our damage is lower or, you know, they have a ton of health so they don't die instantly. But this system is actually pretty cool, I think. Um, you can use potions on characters that are in guard. So keep that in mind that if your character is in guard, you can still heal them. There will be a new trigger alert and target on allies during the fight. You don't see it in this screenshot here, but I believe Grand Blue EN does have it. Oh, you see it right there actually in the corner. So Grand had to trigger on him right now. So his icon is red. Keep in mind though that just because the icon is red doesn't mean that it's going to instantly kill you. I don't think so at least. Um, this character that can give you damage immediately, uh, damage immunity for a turn, for example, Salem. So. You can just give solemn buff to, I believe, Grand, and he'll survive fine, right? I think. Um, I don't know if it's like white damage or something. I don't. I just don't know. <laughs> so that's what I'm thinking, at least in my mind, is that 
while it's cool, the trigger alert system, it makes it a little bit easier, I think, because you can now really abuse it with certain character skills, where you can just give their buffs to the character that's about to die. For example, like Fun Fun Skill 3, give it to that character, and boom, they die, get revived, nothing happened. So, pretty cool. Um, it makes it easier, I think, but I do believe it adds a little bit of depth to the game, because we do have more things to think about now. Uh, one thing I think is really big with the guard system is that because characters cannot attack or use skills, it lowers your overall turn lockout, I believe. Um, I don't know if having a unit in guard will lower it, though, or if they're going to give guard its own lockout. So if it does lower it, that's pretty massive because what the game's going to end up becoming is that you throw your weakest units that don't do a ton of damage, however, provide really good buffs via their skills in guard, and just keep them in guard the whole fight and unguard them when you want to use their skills. That's what I'm thinking about right now currently in the game. However, I could be wrong. Um, tell me what you guys think in the comments down below. But with that, let's get on to the new info. Now we're on to the Lottery Scratch though. Um, lottery Scratch is a new thing for the 6th anniversary. You can get item from a Lottery Scratch card here every day you log in and you can scratch it off. You do need to scratch off multiple copies of the same item you, you um, looking for. So for example, if you were to scratch off a pair of Zonium right here in the bottom left corner, you would need to scratch off two more copies of it in order to acquire that item. So I am assuming though, if you acquire pair of Zonium, it would come with the character. I'm not too sure, but if, under my guess, is that you get the character as well if you didn't have the character. It would be weird if you didn't, but that's what I'm thinking. Just, however, one really big thing here is that don't expect anything. What's it really going to end up being is that you probably get crystals from it, maybe. Maybe uh, pots, berries, stuff like that, a rank. Uh, I would not expect anything good from it because, you know, it's a lot of scratch. You're not probably going to get anything great from it. There's going to be one player, two players who do get lucky, but... The mass majority of players, I would not expect to get anything good. Now here we have the six, um, six times RP and XP. This is very, very, very weird. Um, it's a big boost. However, they are capped off. Once you hit 1 million rank points and 3 million XP points, you get no more of the six times and it will be reduced to two times. Now, two times is still pretty good, but it's, what the hell? Oh, <laughs> uh, I look at the picture, I like cuddle puddle. Uh, I ignore that. Um, <laughs> anyways, uh, <laughs> the two times XP is what most people are gonna get after a while. Um, 1 million rank points is not a lot, nor is 3 million XP. However, it is good for newer players who are ranking up. If you're like 50, rank 50, and, and to like rank 150, this is pretty big for you. And this leveling up any new level 100 character, this will help you a ton with the XP game. So it's pretty good. Um, I think it's not bad by any means. So. It's just that I wish it was not capped off at such a low number because it doesn't really help people who are end game. But I understand they got to help more new game players. This game is a game that's been going on for six years. A lot of content people need to catch up with. So I understand that. That's fine. Now we have the sixth anniversary ticket. Now you see here it says seasonal units to 2019 Christmas and grand units up to Shiva. However, there's a question mark. So we are not guaranteed that this is the way it's going to work we're just inferring it from the last year's ticket units that were not in it last year was also zoe or zodiacs i don't know if they're going to plan on changing that or they're going to add summer zoe to the ticket this time but this is a really important ticket it will be getting its own video actually six videos i plan on doing one for each le individually because each le will take a lot of time to talk about why they need why each ticket or why each character is important or weapon. I had a hard time explaining it, but yeah. 
you see here we have House Santa, Summer Alex, and Christmas Vale. Yes, Christmas Vale. I, I know his name, but he's Vale. So Christmas Vale. All very important characters, very strong characters here. So it's a very important ticket. You do only get this once a year. So if, if you're having a hard time picking it, um, I do have videos coming out for it. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to watch each LD. If, it will take some time though. Now we have the sixth anniversary weapon ticket. All weapons come full limit break and max skill. So this is very big. We have here a scale of dominion. We have a wind hose, Zeno's Koro sword, uh, Tiamat Mallet staff, Fimble, and magnitude weapons. So these are the bunkles. These are proving grounds. This is Zeno. Tiamat Malice, I don't know if they're going to add weapons from Tia uh, Leviathan Malice, but it's a Tiamat Malice. We have Fenrir, Cerberus, and we have Magnitude. Very important ticket. It will be getting its own video as well, so watch out for that. Um, this video may come out a little bit later, though. We do have plenty of time. The five-year anniversary ticket that's expired about like a week ago, so there's plenty of time on this ticket. I'm in no rush to get this video out. There's plenty of other content that I want to explain first before that video comes out, but it will be getting its own video. Also, we'll be getting Magna 1 weapons, 5 starred, max leveled, max skill level. This is great. All the weapons are still viable in the game. Team Up Gun is great. The uh, Colossus Cane is still good. Leviathan Gaze is still good. The Yig Sword is still good. Another Sword is still good. And Claw is still good, especially for newer players. It's great for you, an easy boost to your grid and less farming for you. Now, we also have here a blue Percival skin. And <laughs> yes, if you can't see Percival's face in this character, it's blue Percival, in my opinion. Uh, blue Percival, and then we have Come Take Me Home Daddy. Pretty much Claris. Uh, she's pretty much throwing herself at you, so it's a great skin. I can't believe they were able to top the Valentine skin, but hey, Fly Games does it somehow. I don't. I wonder where her animations are gonna be, but uh, good skin, good skin. Now we have something very big here: limited scam gotchas, two of them. So this limited scam gotcha we have here is for all seasonal units of 2018 and 2019. So you can see here Summer Yig and Christmas Narmea. This is a very big, big scam gotcha. I would recommend most people who do spend money in a game go and get this ticket. I mean, the scam gotcha. Very, very worth it. Um, I believe you can still get the 10 roll too. So I would recommend doing a scam gotcha on the Flash Gala, I believe. Um, I, I think that's how it's going to work. I could be wrong. Um, it's going to last for a while, I believe. I think it lasts until... Uh... I don't know how it's going to work, um, but I recommend doing it on a good banner. Um, I don't know if it's going to be its own banner. I, I really, I'm not too sure, but uh, if it's its own banner, then never mind what I'm saying here. This is a brand new to the game, so forgive me, right? I'm not, I don't know what's going to happen, what's going to be the units, because we do get, the way Scam got to work is that you get a tentpole, then after the tentpole is over, you get an item. After the item is over, then you get your guaranteed scam gotcha item. So I don't know how the 10 roll system is going to work with this new scam gotcha. But if it stays until the 31st, what I believe is going to happen, and then you get to pull on any banner, I'll recommend pulling on a flash gala. Now, that's my thought of how it works. I'm just not too sure. This is brand new to the game, so I just don't know. But... That's just a tip. The same thing applies to this banner here. You can see here it says 329, I believe. So this is a uh, like fest banner. So like fest is a very big thing. You get the zodiacs here. I believe Combera will not be in its banner, as mentioned before. And you still get units like Ray, Fairy, uh, Lesia, Rosetta, Rackham, and Catalina. So still very very worth it. Um, great units overall, so recommend still doing that one as well if you can, if you have the funds. If you don't, 
Sorry, but uh, if you do have the money, recommend doing it. Now we have this new Linworm high level coming out. Um, did no info here. You can get the info from Grand Blue En Twitter. So if you have any questions about it, it will be linked down in the description. You can just scroll through his Twitter to check on the info on this. Here we have six dragon info. They're releasing one by one. I believe the order is going to be fire, wind, water, then earth. The release dates I think are fire will be released on the 310 Brunhilda. Yes, if you guys know who Brunhilda is from Grant um, from Dragalia, you, you, they look the same. So Brunhilda, then we get in the wind one in on 317. I think it's going to be a break between then, and then we'll get the next one on 42 and 49. You see here that the Earth one is 49, so I believe water is 42. Light and dark have no release date right now, I believe. So unfortunately, we're gonna take a little bit of time for light and dark, but it's okay. Light and dark didn't need it anyway, to be honest. Then we have the six dragon weapons. A big thing with these weapons is that you cannot equip the six dragon weapon and opus at the same time. I really hope they change that because it kind of hurts farming it because my opus are all done. But um, I'll probably end up using the six dragon weapons for videos instead. Could people complain more about not having a five star opus than I would like to hear? So this way I can make my damage a little bit lower without removing too much. Uh, you see the weapons here. I uh, don't know how it's going to trade system is going to work for it, but. Uh, we'll get there when we get there. <laughs> this so you know, these fights are solo fights, the six dragons. So just keep that in mind. They're not raids, they are solo fights. So make sure you are prepped for each fight. You do have some time, um, but to make sure you're ready for it. So even if you can't beat them dragons, you can upgrade the six dragon weapons to the second skill, apparently. I don't know how that's going to work. I can't read any of this harbor garbin, so um, I'm not Japanese. I'm not fluent by any means, so unfortunately, I can't read it. Now here we have the lumberjack class. Lumberjack is a new class. I am very sad that the dabbing dog is gone. He he kind of dabbing a little bit, but you know I can't see his other arm. Feels no dabbing dog, and we got the birds over here. Looks cool though. Great skin. I mean, a great class. <laughs> It's going to be Action Harp, which is pretty good. And along with the new Lumberjack class, we have a new another class, Cavalier. Cavalier is going to be a gun, uh, at least spear and gun. I don't know what happens to the party in this picture. I don't know if the horse takes over the party. Or I don't know what's going on. But uh, looks cool class, though. Will be videos on both classes when they come out. The one thing I mentioned about these classes is that their class weapon will be out in late April, kind of similar to, to, to Chrysor. So they're not going to come out immediately, the weapons, but uh, they'll come out eventually. Now we have some new class ability to Berserker, Warlock, Bandit, Nighthound, um, Elysian, and that one class nobody uses. So I don't know that they do. I believe Berserker gets bonus damage. Uh, Warlock is some skill. <laughs> I don't know what they do. I think Bandit Tycoon, Bandit Tycoon gets a um, Tycoon, right? Uh, Bandit Tycoon gets a uh, bonus damage skill as well. I don't know. I can't translate. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm American. Leave me alone. <laughs> we get a new chat stamp. Don't care about this. Whatever. Who cares? Uh, here. Here's another big one here. Is that the new Arkham ticket? Arkham ticket limit uncap up to 90. So, if you have not brought any of the cap increase, your cap will be 30. However, if you brought any of the cap increase, your cap will be increased to 90. I don't know why they're doing this. What I believe is going to happen is that they're going to, instead of the two we get normally daily, they're going to increase the two to like three. Maybe the two we get daily will be, well, normally we get one daily, right? And then during Magna Effect, we get two. What I believe is going to happen is now we're going to get two daily. And then um, when we have Magna Effect, we probably get four. 
I could be wrong, but that's what I'm thinking, at least. I just think that they're going to give us more tickets, make people get through the Arc Room faster when we get the new Arc Room update. Uh, so we have weapon inventory limit uncapped. I believe we're getting 200 to our normal inventory. So it was before 300, now we're getting 200 extra. And then we're getting 600 to our stash. So pretty good, we're gonna have 700 inventory if you brought all the uncapped to your inventory and you're gonna have 1800 in your stash. Each stash holding up to 300 now. Really good, really good. Cause right now inventory problem is always a problem in GBF. So having more space is very good. Fending a Sherbert's weapon, material, trade and stuff. I don't know what this is about. Uh, apparently you could trade for the items or something. I, I don't know. It's weird. Most of the weapons are not even used anymore. Uh, Sherbert's gun is still used and one Fimble maybe still used, but they're not like required by any means. Especially with other weapons getting full limit breaks in the future. Names I will mention later. You can also use more than one single gotcha ticket now. So, you know, before, Whenever you use your single ticket, you had to do it individually one by one. Now you can use up to 10 in one go. Just keep in mind when you use 10, you don't get the guaranteed SR at the end. But regardless, I think that's still pretty great. It makes it a lot easier to go through your single tickets. So I'm happy with that personally. Going through your single tickets a lot quicker makes things a lot easier when sparking because a lot of the game gives you a lot of single tickets. So going through your single tickets quicker makes it a lot faster rather than clicking like 200 single tickets individually one by one. In March, we're getting Vayne as a five star. So this is it look. It's pretty cool. Um, I don't think it's that bad personally, but um, it's, it's okay, it's okay. Then we have the rank up cap to 275. I will be doing this on live stream, ranking up, doing the rank up cap, uh, rank up cap quest. So if you guys want to come watch my Twitch channel, Cytro, you can watch me do it live. Hopefully it's a fight. Uh, I don't want to do the meme uh, thing we did for 225 again, where we had to like jump hoops, freaking twirl your fist around, all that. Rent. I don't want to do that. No, I want to do a fight and be done. That's what I'm hoping. I'm praying. If not, I'm going to be very annoyed. Now we have a Yubaha high level solo option. Apparently it uses halos to get item buffs since you get like health buff, attack buff, and all that. I don't understand the point of this. Um, I guess so you can f have the fun of trying to solo you Baja high level maybe. I don't understand it. I don't know if you get any rewards for it either. It does not count to your the solo trophy. If you are soloing it via the solo option, you will not get the trophy. So I don't understand. I guess it's just a test run maybe for people. Uh, it's really weird, but I don't know. And we have very two big things here. Grand Order Full Limit Break. Thank you, God. Grand Order and Kaguya. Now, with Grand Order, we're getting a 50% defense boost on the main aura. No attack boost, unfortunately. No modifier chains. That's kind of whatever. But what it does gain now is a sub- um, a sub ability as the sub slot it gives five percent damage boost to null element enemies null element being far high level it also gives a boost to um far high level and uh grand order high level those are the two most relevant null element and, and yubaha high level <laughs> i didn't even think of yubaha high level but it gives the boost to yubaha and yubaha high level so very big, very, very big. Not only that, though, it gives a Zoe buff. No, Light Zoe. Light Zoe buff to all allies. Very, very strong buff. If you ever use Light Zoe, that buff being on this call is very, very massive. So it's going to be a very, very good summon. Will I stone it, though, recommending you? Um, I would only stone it if you go... Mm, I would only stone it if you farm Grand Order high level. If you farm Grand Order high level, you pretty much have to stone this guy or this woman. So, because Grand Order high level does drop gold bars, and 
being able to get to 1.4 million faster it's always good so if you're a grand order high level farmer you it's a mandatory you need it so that's my recommendation um anyone else you don't need it it's good though but i wouldn't stone it yet i would wait but for people who do farm grand order high level you got to get it now kagi is going to be getting um a xp boost now so rest in peace um people who used the uh cat sift i think it's called that 30 percent xp summon kagia will now be giving 30 percent drop rate and xp becoming number one queen for drop rating and farming along with that she will be giving a 10 percent xp boost as a sub ally so you always have xp boost if you do have kagia four star and i believe her call is, is like a a boost to your CA damage specs, I think. So I don't know too much on her call, but the big things are that she will be giving 30 to a uh, rank, not rank, 30 to XP and drop rate and the 10% XP boost if you run her as sub ally. So all content, you can pretty much get XP boost if you have Kaguya four star. Not bad, not bad. We have Nightmare Halo change. Um, the, the chance of getting it is being increased. If you don't get it nine times in a row, on your 10th run, you will get a guaranteed spawn. So pretty much every 10 runs, you get guaranteed. We're getting Skill Jewel change. Um, if you have not used them by the 10th, they will be deleted. You see the change here. So pretty, pretty big here. So make sure to use all of them before the 10th. If you're hoarding them, they will be deleted. We're also getting quality life changes to ally positions. So when you change your party position, it's a lot easier now, rather than having to click on a unit, then search for the unit, and then click the unit again to change the ally. It's much quicker now. We can just click them once and then move them around. And I think also a new reward for Premium Friday, if you trade for it you get a 1 xp boost to friday and weekends so if you're a guy who likes doing weekend slimes maybe worth it um probably worth it so not bad now here's the big one here we're getting a full limit break to twigs medusa weapon cortana pretty much all the tier one raids in the game medusa weapon is really actually pretty good now probably gonna be number one weapon for this raw damage in earth because it does have a double modifier so it's pretty pretty good and twigs i don't know how i feel about them getting a four star now i don't know what skills are going to be changed to them i don't know what their stats are going to be but these are all getting a full limit break so do expect videos on them when they come out we are getting a what makes the sky blue three rerun on the 20th of April, the 28th. Uh, however, the Ultima Core that comes with the event, you cannot get it if you've already played this event, apparently. However, if you're new to the event, you can get a new Ultima Core. I believe that's how it works. I could be wrong though. If I'm wrong about any info here, just leave it in the description. Apparently we're getting a new raid on the 30th for Eternal Weapon Skins. However, you need to have all 10 Eternals to get it. I don't know if the blue skin would be required. I'll be picking up the blue skin just in case that you do need it to get these weapon skins. Hopefully not though. I think that'd be ridiculous if they make it lock behind the blue skin, but just in case I'll pick it up. So here we have in May, we're having Beezlebub's Raid and this is where you get your actual weapons. So that means that if you have not got the actual weapons from the um, Grand Blue versus promotion thing, you can get them because you get a two month, a two month preview pretty much on the weapons. Once you hit May, it's pretty much pointless to get the DLC anymore. Apparently it's gonna be pretty hard, about as hard as Lucy high level. However, it's not gonna be like a complicated thing. We gotta clear labor. It's, it's more like he hits hard, you hit hard and type of thing. So expected the theme from Grand Blue versus to be the fight song. If you played Grand Blue Versus, you can expect that song to be in the game. We're also getting six multi-dragon raid. That's coming in May. 
So this is for people who can't solo it, apparently. Uh, and here's the big one. 100 gold moon uncap. I plan on picking up another 100 gold moon weapon, two of them, when it's come out. I probably want to pick up this harp, because I do expect it to be really strong. But um, that is my what I'm thinking. But I'll wait until the uncap comes out, and we'll see what the weapons do. I do currently have two 100 gold moon weapons, so I will be able to do videos on two of them. But I do plan on picking up two more. And we have here, March Summer character is Tina. Tina looks cute, so not bad. Rest in peace, people who wanted Lucio. We're going to have to wait the summer. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people wanted Lucio, but rest in peace. Here we can see that we have new EX poses in the game. We have three of them. Hellas, Naramea, and Sara. Pretty cool. We have a new limited character, Mugen. Elemented was hinted in the event, so probably fire. Um, what I'm thinking is that, kind of like Ray, Ray is filling in for a, the second Dark Eternal, and Mugen is going to fill in for the second Fire Eternal. That's what I'm thinking. So each LD would have two Eternals now. Currently, it used to be only one Eternal for Dark and Fire. Ray gave Dark two, pretty much, and then Mugen is going to give Fire two. Awakening for characters, I don't know how the system going to work, but apparently we're going to be awakening characters now. Um, the material for awakening is going to be announced later to get the farming. Hoarding, guys, you got to hoard. We don't know what's going to be needed, but hoard everything because it's going to be required eventually. And it won't be any RNG stats. It's going to be flat stat boost, apparently. We're also getting a new type of event, apparently. This will look to be a tower system. Um... Similar to, uh, if you ever played Epic 7, the Abyss. So that's what I'm thinking. Like, you go from, like, floor 1, floor 2, up to floor 100. And then we have Defense Order coming back, apparently, as a new way to earn Valor Badges. That means that, um, uh, GW will no longer be the only way to earn Valor Badges in the game now. Meaning that you can trade for more items. So you can now trade for Sunstones. Evil Light and maybe Gold Bar to be pretty good. And on months that GW isn't scheduled, you will have Defense Order. So it'd be Defense Order, Guild Wars, Defense Order, Guild Wars. Pretty cool. You see it here. But it's not PvP. It's not PvP, it's all PvE. And the big one people have been talking about the most. Eternal's next uncap, sometime in 2020. So if you guys haven't farmed 15 gold bars ready for these Eternals, I recommend hoarding about 10 at least, bare minimum, uh, for end game players, you know. People who already have gold bars, you know, you fully break each Eternal. This is for you. Hoard 10 gold bars, bare minimum. Currently, I'm doing the same thing as well. Get 10 of them ready to go for these new Eternals. Get in the upgrades. We have a new collab with IMAS in May. So hopefully um, they could promote the current IMAS characters to SSR or something because they're still SR and I don't like it. And now we have one extra account action redo apparently, I think. So if anyone made a mistake, you maybe gold bar the wrong weapon, dama bar the wrong weapon, anything like that, you get one more action redo. And the roulette is coming back in the 10th. There will be no rock, paper, scissors or anything like that. But we will get a guaranteed 100 draw on Legfest 30th of March. So people who are considering sparking in Legfest, this is a free 100. So it's a really big thing that makes your spark 200. So I would consider doing it for people who probably want to ray. Vajra may be on that banner. We don't know yet, but uh, it's it's worth it. It's worth it. Now, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. If I missed anything important, leave it in the comments. I'll give you my opinions on it. But thank you guys for coming. Um, recipe to Sunstone, by the way. We didn't get Sunstone. Feels bad, but uh, oh well. If you liked it, though, 
leave a like. But with that, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.